Hope you're not making me cook. If you do, we'll pray for you. But I'm going to jump into the Word just, a, just for a few moments. If you would mind standing just for the reading of the Word. And thanks for everyone taking part today. It's been a great time here today. And we're going to read uh, 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call this Shudamite. And when he had called her, she stood before him. And he said unto him, say now unto her, behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Wouldest thou be spoken for to the king or to the captains of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Verily, she had no child, and her husband is old. And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door. And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And she said, Nay, my lord, thou man of God, do not lie unto thy handmaiden. And the woman conceived and bare a son, and at the season that Elisha has said unto her, according to the time of life. Lord Jesus, we do thank you, Lord God, for this opportunity to be, Lord, in, in, the, in your house, Lord God, to speak to your people. Lord, we do thank you for our mothers that we have in our lives. They are very special to us, Lord, and we just thank you for that as well. Lord, just be with us now as we bring forth the word in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I'm going to talk just briefly about the Shudamite woman. This Shudamite woman, she was already a great woman. The Shudamite woman, great woman. And I look at these scriptures and I think about how that this woman, you know, he said, what can I do for you? You know, can I speak to the captains? And, you know, he thought, well, you know, maybe I can just let her rub shoulders with some big shots. And she's like, nah, I dwell among my own people. I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm right here. I'm good. I'm good with my people. But this woman, without a doubt, she was a good woman. She told her husband, you know, we need to build a little uh, a place next to our house. So when the man of God comes through, we can just say, hey, there's, there's a place that you can stay. You know, it's almost like the Motel 6. We'll live a light on for you. You know, so anytime you come through here. She would, you know, compel him to eat, eat bread, and, and, to, and to dine with her and her husband. And, you know, he, she was just a good woman, the Shunammite woman, a good woman. But <clears throat> I can sense something here that in these scriptures that the Shunammite woman had her heart broken to the point where she's like, I'm just going to let that behind. She couldn't have children, but she moved on with her life. She didn't let that drag her down. She still was a great woman, but she could not have children. She's like, I'm just going to give that up. And then it surfaced again. Now, I can compare to this a little bit, not having children, okay? But I can compare to this as far as being 17 and losing the use of my arm. And then... Every time there'd be some faith healer come by, you know, everybody be pushing me, you know, go, go get prayed for, go get prayed for, and only to have my heart broken once again. And I think about this Shudamite woman, how her heart was broken over and over to the point where she's like, I'm done with that. I don't want that. Don't lie to me. She's telling the man of God, don't lie to me. Don't put that in my head. Don't, don't give me, you know, drink this and, you know, magically you'll be pregnant. No, no, I, I just, I'm past that. But God wasn't past it. God had plans for her. Let's move on to verses 18 through 21. And when the child was grown, now she's had this child, it fell on the day that she, he went out to his father, to the reapers. And he said to his father, my head, my head. And he said to the lad, another young boy, carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him, up, him, brought him to his mother, 
he sat on her knees till noon and then died. And she went up and laid him in the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. Now, think about this. You have been gracious enough to be given a son, given this promise, only to have this promise die in your lap. If it was me, I'd say, well, you know what? I'd rather not even have it than to have it and then lose it. To see the life go out of your child. This ain't just a baby now. This ain't something that this was a young lad. You got time. You got time invested in this child. And now you sit there and you watch the life drain from your child. Again, heart, that was heartbreaking. But the title of my sermon is, When Mom Prays. I thank God that we got some good moms that will not give up. We got good moms that will not stand by and just let the devil come in and do what he wants. We got good moms that will say, I, if I need to pray, I'll pray. If I need to fight, I'll fight. I'll do whatever it takes to make this happen. Let's move on. We're going to move on to... Uh, hold on one second here. Let's jump all the way to verses 27. 27 through 32. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by his feet. But Gehazi came near and thrust her away. Now here she is. She's come to the man of God. She's desperate. She already told her husband, I, I got to go. Her husband told her, hey, you know, it's, it's not the first moon, and, you know, it's going to be dark. Thank God for moms that are not afraid of the dark. Thank God for moms that say, i got to save my child. She knew that this was a man of God. She knew that if she could just get there, maybe something could happen. Even Gehazi pushed her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord had hidden from me, and have not told me. And she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? I feel this woman's pain. She's like, Why did you do this to me? I, I, why did you give me a son only to have him die in my lap? Why? Why would you do this? Then said Gehazi, or well, then he said to Gehazi, Gird up thy loins and take thy staff in thy hand and go, and, and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. If thou, and if any salute thee, answer him not again. What he was saying was, you got to go. Go fast. Go fast. In verses 30, And the mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth and thy soul liveth, I will not leave. And he arose and he followed her. We'll just stop right there. So here it is. Gehazi pushed her away. Mom's tough, though. You know, she ain't giving up. And I think of moms that have been so tough. I think of my own mother. Has, she has been tough. She has been tough when I have been in dark places, when my brother needed help or I needed help. And she has been there for the children of the church, being the first lady of the church. You know, other children will come to her. Other people will come to her. That's the way tough moms are. That's the way praying moms are. Amen? Amen. We're going to read verses 33. And he went in, therefore, and shut the door upon the entwine and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes on his eyes and his hands on his hands and stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon the child, of, and the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. And he called Gehazi and said, Call the Shudamite. So he called her, and when she has come unto, come unto him, he said, Take up thy son. And she went in, and she fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. 
This is a beautiful story of a mom that's not going to give up. A mom, and don't get me wrong, you got challenges out there. You got challenges out there. I see challenges everywhere, but you're not going to give up. You, when, when you, why do we always say this? When all else fails, we'll pray. No. We need to pray first. We need to pray and say, God, help my child. Take care of them. I'm going to share a little short story with you before we have our dismissal. This is a true story. It was on the internet, so it has to be true. Okay. That part was sarcastic, but no, this is a true story. Story about a man named Peter in 1820. Peter now was on a ship, and he was headed toward Australia. And Peter was on this ship, and the ship sank. Peter was the only man floating in the water that survived, the only one. Another ship came by and picked Peter up. The ship went a little bit further. Guess what? The second ship sunk. Can you believe this? I can only imagine. What am I doing wrong? I mean, I'm, I'm on the first ship, it sunk. Now I'm on the second ship, ship and it sunk. And... Sometimes we have to look at things differently. He might have been thinking, what am I doing wrong? When he might say, man, I'm the luckiest man alive. You know, that ship went down. Now this ship went down. I'm floating in the water. Guess what came along? Another ship. I'm not making this stuff up now. Okay? So he's on this third ship. And this, I'm just moving along. You know. Guess what happened to that third ship? It sunk. The third ship sunk. You, you have to Google this later, okay? This is true. I'll speed up the story. He went to the fourth ship. That one sunk. He went to the fifth ship. Yeah, that one sunk. Finally, on the sixth one, now that one didn't sink, okay? That ship did not sink. So the doctor was examining Peter, and he goes, your story is absolutely amazing. And I must say, you are in good health. This is amazing. All the stuff you've been through, and you're still in great health. And, then, and you know, he goes, well, you're free to, to go. You know, go out there. And he goes, and the doctor looked at him and said, but you know what? Um, I need a little favor. Well, Peter, I mean, if anybody should be grateful, it should be Peter, right? He goes, Peter, would you do me a favor? We have a woman, an old woman on this ship, and she is the sweetest lady. And she's dying. Now, she knows all of us. And, and uh, could you just kind of deceive her a little bit and just act like you're her son? Because she keeps on praying, Lord, let me see my son before I die. And she's so sweet, such a wonderful woman. And would you just walk in and, like, maybe sit next to her bed and, and just act like her son? You know, she probably won't know no different. Would you please do that? She hasn't seen her son for 10 years. Well, Peter, he's grateful. He's like, sure, I'll go in. I'll talk to her. Peter walks in. He sits down on the bed next to Sarah which was his mom. And he said, Mom, I'm here. I'm here, Mom. The woman did come out of this sickness, and they did have a happy ending. But let me tell you this. I'm going to leave you with this. Do not underestimate the power of a praying mom. Amen. Amen. Would you please stand with me? I know we have some special things outside here for our moms today. So please, moms, uh, we'll have some kind of order out there uh, to give you a little gift.